graphic design? Can you make a living at that? Three, two, one, fun, 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 Welcome to Design Futures, a show about what happens after design school. I'm Chris St. Cyr, and my guest on this episode is Jordan McClendon. How are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing well. You sound good, too. All right, let's get to it. Jordan is the manager of digital communications at the Center for Advanced Research at SUNY. He serves as producer and designer of digital content for the Arrive Center and manages its media portfolio. Additionally, his collection of animated shorts titled Albany Shorts has been featured on PBS, NBC, CBS, and The Collaborative. The films have also been screened at the New York City Independent Film Festival and the Flick Fair Film Festival in Los Angeles. Uh, And he is a 2012 graduate of the Sage Colleges. I think I got a flick, flick fair film flesh festival. That's a mouthful. <laughs> My wife and I, we were just going over that. Yeah, that is, that is an interesting choice of titling. Thanks for having me on. Um, you know, it's great to be here be, being in this field to be able to talk more about this. I'm very excited to be on this. Excited. You're an old pro, old pro at all this stuff. You know, you're all over the media. I mentioned, you know, all those local news, uh, programs and articles and uh your your face is known around town your and your animation so what's it what's that like do people recognize you they say like oh i saw your film or i saw you on the news or sometimes um but you know it, it's mostly through through the work you know people people will recognize people will be able to distinguish between one piece and another you know that i do you know if they, if they see something that I've created, they could say, oh, you know, this is, this, you know, I've seen something like this before. It was probably created by the same guy. So, and honestly, Chris, that's, that's the objective. You know, I, I'm not trying to, you know, get my face out there. I, I want people to really recognize the work and have that kind of be the, you know, be at the forefront of everything. Like the recognition, you know, it, it's, it's really nice, but if anything, it just, it gives me confidence. It gives me the ability to, pick up certain clients and kind of expand, you know, the field that I work in. So it's great in that regard, you know, there's less advertising needed to, um, you know, to land certain types, certain types of contracts or jobs. So it, it all kind of recycles back into getting better at the work and, you know, showing the work. So it's all good stuff. So can you talk a little bit about what the, arrive center is and what what you do at suny and just kind of an overview of that role that you have now which is a little different than things you've done in the past sure so the arrive center you know short for advanced research and reducing the impact of violence in education and you know that's pretty self-explanatory its mission is to bring awareness and help with prevention of um you know violence sexual sexual harassment sexual abuse, things that can really be a problem at a, a lot of campuses across, uh, across the state, you know, across the country. So, you know, our goal is to kind of bring awareness to, to that, you know, help generate funds for prevention, advertise via campaigns, social, social media blasts, those sorts of things. And, you know, my job specifically is to deliver engaging high fidelity collateral basically for marketing for public service announcements you know just to really get people engaged i mean that's you know the the mission is the mission and it's a mission i really really believe in and it's a great mission to work for the objective personally for me is to really get people engaged using graphics the best way i know possible it's great work and you know i i love i love this field uh chris i mean you knew from you know, back from Sage, you know, working in that, working in that office all morning, all night, you know, working on my animations, but to, to, to apply that, that passion of mine to a mission like this, you know, I couldn't ask for anything better than this. I mean, it's, it's really fulfilling work. It's wonderful to hear you uh, talk about it this way. My job is, um, I'm not going to say simple, but it's something I know how to do. 
but there's so much more that goes into it, you know, outside of the graphics aspect, um, the media aspect. It's, you know, building training courses. It's developing content with the subject matter experts, you know, the, the law aspect of it. There, the t- it's a huge team of very dedicated, talented people that you know, really output a lot of good material to share with campuses, to share with departments across the state. The team as a whole is, uh, you know, they, they are really, really dutiful and very dedicated to uh, this mission. So it's great to be a part of kind of like a like-minded task force. So can you talk about the structure of who you work with and roles and responsibilities and how you work with them? Sure. Um, it's pretty various. We have programmers, we have web designers, we have content creators, we have researchers. We all work under general the general counsel's office, which is, um, for lack of a better word, the, the, the law aspect of SUNY. From the subject matter that they kind of put in place, you know, we develop ways to engage with campuses, engage with students. And, you know, that could be media, graphics, to um, instructional design, developing courses. Because we're all kind of on the same page, there's not a lot of need for, you know, like a directive. I mean, we do have a hierarchy, you know, I, I have a supervisor, everyone has a supervisor, but, you know, we, we're kind of all on the same mission here. So mm-hmm. it's kind of, you know, we see a goal. What, what can each department or individual do to contribute to that goal? You know, is it graphics? Is it instructional design? Is it messaging? Is it marketing? It's pretty w- a wide scope of people and departments that yeah. kind of contribute to it. So, and so your title is manager. So are you managing people or projects or both? Not so much people. I would say projects. If a project calls for a certain amount of people and, you know, that has to do with getting a message out through engaging graphics I can kind of take leadership role on that, you know, as it is now, it's more me contributing my skills to a particular goal. I mean, SUNY's big. I mean, it's a big school system, right? There's 64 campuses across a large state. How do you, I guess, manage the size of the projects? So we act as the hub for these particular issues for all the campuses throughout the state. And we kind of, you know, reverberate our message out to the different campuses in the hopes that they kind of receive the information, that they can blast the information themselves. It's not so much creating all this content for all, for all okay. these campuses. It's creating content, a singular package of content okay. and just sending it out. It, it's all encompassing, but it's not like we're creating 64 sets of content. Right. That makes sense. What are uh, some of the tools or uh, and processes that, that you use? Like, you know, do you use Slack? Do you use Microsoft Teams? Like, what are the things that um, you use in your office to coordinate all these, uh, all these different uh, team members? Because of COVID and everything that kind of goes with that, a lot of the staff have gotten used to... Um, telecommuting, so using Zoom, using Teams to kind of coordinate with one another. But the idea is the same as, you know, everyone meeting in a room and having a, an ideation session. And that's, you know, I, I think that's the best tool, you know, outside of the digital realm, just everyone kind of coming together, brainstorming ideas and forming it together. From my perspective, everything starts off with ideation storyboard creative in general storyboard script and then output 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 review it's fluid up to a certain point and then we really start nailing down the visuals after the uh the structural storyboarding and that's that sort of stuff so that's that's generally the process but you know it's fluid from one project to another Uh, some projects are small in scope you know they don't need you know a a team of a dozen or half a dozen people to uh, really push it through. Uh, Sometimes I'm just given an assignment, you know, Hey, make this, make the, make make this look pretty. And, um, you know, I just, you know, I do it. I mean, I've worked in great environments, but you know, so many dedicated 
experts at what they're doing. Um, it, 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 it really, it does two things. It, it makes me nervous. Cause I'm like, I gotta, I gotta perform from my, from, <laughs> from my end, but it also it's alleviating because I, you know, I can really focus on this thing that I am good at. There's a lot of this teams in place. There's people, projects, the manager role. You've been out of school since 2012. Can you uh, give us a range of what your salary is for this kind of role? I don't know if I should give you a specific number, but um, o- over over 100, just under. So, just under. Yeah. Okay. So right it's, around 100. Yeah. Getting a job like this for me is kind of like you know I actually you know I made it I got in, but it, at that point it's not you know there's no one mushing behind me to push forward. It's like, Mm -hmm. you know, how far can you take this? Like what connections can you build? Um, How can you improve the program? How can you, how can you make people around you better using, you know, what you're good at? So, you know, to me, it's kind of like the sky's the limit. And, you know, I'm just kind of stepping into um, much, much larger world than I would in in the, uh, in the private sector. And and it's great. You know, I, I really enjoy it. Yeah, that sounds great. I want to take a look at a couple of these projects. Is this one that you've worked on recently? I'll just turn the sound down a little bit. But right. So is Go. this from the, the current job? Uh, sort of. The old saying goes is um, uh, it's impossible to get into, um, get into the state for employment. And it's certainly difficult, but, you know, this project and a few others were done through contracting with, um, you know, Joseph Storch, um, who's, my, who's my supervisor now, and um, Elizabeth Brady. And I spent a couple of years, you know, developing, can- helping developing campaigns for their program before eventually they, uh, they brought me on full time. And this was one of the projects. This was um, for, yeah, this was displayed at the Islanders game on their big screen i I forget what they call it a pelotron or teletron so jumbotron some kind of tron yeah yes there's a tron in there i don't know how (laughs) to what degree yeah but that was cool because you know i've never been to a professional hockey game and that was fun enough but at halftime you know seeing you know a motion graphic that i put together seeing that on like the big on the big tron there that was cool i really liked that and, yeah, when your you design know. is like, you know, in front of thousands of people yeah. and it's like, well, I don't know how big is that screen? Yeah, like hundreds of feet, 500 feet or yeah. I don't know, it's something yeah. really large. That's, that's when the family and friends are like, whoa, that is so awesome. You're you made it. You you're like you're oh, now I get what you do, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I make those kind I of make, things. I make PSAs for uh, for hockey games. Yeah. That's when we talked a little while back, you talked about this pathway to this current job. So can you talk uh, a little bit more about that? So you, you spent some time as a contract worker, contract designer, working on some, some of these projects for this office or for SUNY in general. Is that right? And then you were approached. I I had been creating these um, 3d animated shorts about Albany and um, I got I got the attention of some of the people um, in the office there, and you know they we met, had coffee, and you know we wanted to discuss some of the projects that they had in mind coming up, some of the campaigns, and they they wanted to bring me on as um, an animator, video guy, cinematographer. You know that that was a couple of years ago, and um, I had been working full time at the time, so it was kind of a a larger contract gig, you know, from there, just kind of, you know, really built trust, a good back and forth with Joe and Elizabeth for the state to pay a contractor to do something. It's so much more difficult than it would be in the private sector In the private sector. You know, you cut a check and you get them to sign a tax form with the state. You have to apply for grants. You have to get okays. You have to really get it in writing what's being outputted, what you're paying the person for how long, and to do that for one project and then another project, and then from a different department. It was long, it was difficult. And plus, you know, I was working a full-time job and at that point, SUNY was just one client. So I couldn't dedicate 
you know, a, a lot of the time I wanted to, I really wanted to do it, but it, you know, it, it was, it was tough to do that. So, you know, eventually the idea was, you know, let's bypass, you know, all the minutia and just have the guy work for us. And, you know, they carved out, you know, some space and a grant to the state. Yeah. They brought me on full time. And, uh, you know, I said, I said, of course, um, it's good, <laughs> good, good pay. I like the work. I like the people. And, you know, the, the idea that you were, you know, doing animation, doing, you know, exploring something that you love to do. It got noticed. You got some work from that. And then all that led to like this new position. It, there's a nice sequence of how that unfolds. Telling it right now in this moment, it seems very clear and uh, efficient how you could move through that uh, sequence of, of projects and jobs. But I'm, I'm sure, like you said, it was a few years ago it started and then it's a, it's a longer process. In my past, you know, I would paralyze myself. You know, I can't get a job or, you know, I need the money or I would love to get this contract gig. And I would just sit still and just think about how could I possibly get, you know, get in front of people's eyes with what I do and what I want to do. But I don't know. At some point, I just I said, you know what, man, I'm just going to start making work. I'm going to start practicing. I'm going to start taking tutorials. I'm going to start, you know, reaching out to the community with, you know, through these animations. I'm really going to engage in what I want to do and just put it out there and, you know, just kind of get get that sort of response. And the response was pretty good. You know, just starting off, uh, you know, people really reacted to seeing their seeing their town, seeing their city animated that way. And, you know, I was just like, yeah, I mean, that's that's really my goal. And it just opened up so many doors and it it cost me nothing, but it gave me everything. If that that sounds kind of corny, but it it's true. Like it really I learned so much through that process of making my own work, you know, unprovoked, just doing it, Mm -hmm. um, making connections that I never dreamed of having. For me, that's the main takeaway. It's just just doing the work, doing yeah. what you are good at doing, getting better at what you're good at doing. And, you know, who knows? Well, it's going to lead you somewhere. And the fun part is finding out where. Yeah. I guess. So I'm going to play one, one of these. This is. Oh, this is the. Uh, this is the, the ice skating. Yeah. So this is one of those animations you've been talking about um, that you created right on your own time right and then it got noticed by uh, some people around Albany it's kind of in the same vein but this one is actually this one's a little bit different um, I was approached with a contract to um, for a 3d projection mapping project down at SUNY you know taking a building and rearranging it in all kinds of different shapes. And, um, you know, my eyes are always biggest, bigger than my stomach. So, <laughs> you know, I told um, the folks down at Magic Wig Productions, yeah, of course I could do this. I'm a 3D animator. I could take apart buildings and do all kinds of stuff like that. But I really didn't know. So I went home that night. And th- this was back, I think, November 2019. And I started giving myself exercises, and this was one of them, of taking apart buildings, putting them back together, and creating like a narrative around it. So this was more of like a learning, uh-huh. seeing if I could actually do this for a major production, for a major client. And um, it kind of turned into its own little thing, but it really started off as like, you know, can I can I do something like this? And, you know, I just kind of practice it and, you know, figure out the rest uh i think this is the one that i saw on a few different of the news interviews right? oh yeah yeah right. i mean yeah this is definitely a personal you know um personal nod to downtown i've always loved going downtown albany i, I work there so um, i really wanted to capture the um the liveliness uh the feeling down there and just kind of wrap it, wrap it around, you know, story. Every animation that I make, I, I, there's always um, a thing to learn, you know, like a key takeaway, camera work, character modeling, 
architecture. But this for me was storyboarding and cuts to scenes. Yeah, that that was that was the major exercise for this. Yeah, there's so many so many different aspects of design and sequence and motion that that goes into a project like this. And there's definitely moments in here so I'm I'm always curious about like a certain a certain parts that I wonder how it's done or you know the decisions behind it. There's a, there's a part, I'm not sure when it shows up, but when there's like a, it's shot from like somebody inside of the, like a building, like looking down and it looks like a camera focus or, or zooming in on, a, on the uh, rollerblader. And it just seems like very much a, 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 a film shot as opposed to like an animation. Like I wouldn't expect this, like this right here, like that, like kind of zooming it. It always it makes it feel like it's more of a film than like I don't know traditional animation I guess. Yeah, that's uh, that's a specifically um, and for me anyway, James Cameron thing that he does. He's always doing that in his movies. He's doing those quick zooms when he really wants to give scope. Because James Cameron's all about scope. He's all everything is so large. Yeah. Um, and you know to really that that shot is to give like you know this is who this is who the person is and they're on this road and they're going down a hill so you do that quick zoom it's almost like an impending scale i, I guess is the best best way i know how to, yeah. how to how to describe that so yeah there's def, definitely inspiration there's a whole, whole whole bunch of stuff i like to incorporate into uh, the animation work whenever i can what's what's the one i am such an amateur What's the one? Um, we all are. We're all learning. The, um, the Hitchcock, the Zoom. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, where you kind of, again, I'm not a film guy, but you, yeah. I think it's, it's you're focused on a subject and the camera's yeah. moving, but the lens is also shifting. Yeah. Is that right? So it, it, it gives you kind of a weird. You're flattening uh, the, the image yeah. by pulling away. And yeah, I don't know. In, I can't remember so. what that's called, but. Yeah, I know my, what you're talking about. My film friends are gonna tear me up for that because <laughs> I, 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 I know what it is. I just can't remember what it is. But you know, it, it's it's those signature techniques that I like to kind of play around with. There is obviously in in this kind of work, you know, it's related to film. I mean, there's animation, right? I mean, it's some people would say it's the same thing. So you're you're interested in this. You're self-taught for the most part. Um, you did some some of this a little bit at school, but. Do you have thoughts on, you know, do you, do you want to go back to school and study film or study animation or like take this to another level? Or have you thought about kind of the future of this part of what you do? Uh, I, I guess to, bre to break that question apart, you know, going back to school, I, I, I've thought about that. I guess I need a reason to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, like I, I, if I went back to school, I think... I'm worried I would be sacrificing really on the deck experience and what that's given me, you know, some of the projects that are presented to me in the professional field, they require learning. You know what I mean? They require oh, yeah. you to really figure out how to do it. School. I mean, higher learning is certainly difficult, but you kind of understand a rubric for what you're getting and what you set out to learn because i mean you're paying to learn it but in the professional field four years ago i was approached with a project to create a vr roller coaster for you know going through the history of international trade compliance and it was such like a <laughs> how in the world i said yes of course i don't even like, know what I you said. just said <laughs> exactly i know but roller coaster I, and finance and yes what? yep but we we pulled it together and we you know i my again my eyes bigger than my stomach uh you know i know a little bit of 3d stuff i can make a ball bounce so make a <laughs> roller coaster and make it sure. vr and have it render you know 360 degrees and understand the weeks it's going to take to render that 
And, yeah. you know, that right there required me to step up my education very rapidly. And yeah. it was rapid, you know, to give that up. I, I feel like I would be in a sense um, yeah. to dedicate time to go back to school. I wouldn't be where I am now if it wasn't for those real world projects or goals or milestones that I had to teach myself. Uh, you've probably been asked this. What, uh, what Albany neighborhood is, is next? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd like to go. I'd like to take a run at Washington Park right here downtown. Beautiful park. Uh, there's great architecture. Um, the landscape is unique. I, I, think, I think there's good opportunity there to uh, create a nice little story. When that's going to happen... Um, I don't know. <laughs> the new full time job is is uh, taking all all your time, right? Yeah, we'll get there. Uh, a couple of those films were in film festivals that I mentioned. Or what was the film festival experience like? It's great. The ones before the pandemic, you know, going to those, you know, down the city or you know, right here in Albany, you know, it's a lot of fun. You know, there's it's a lot of a lot of really good talent, especially. You know, right here in Albany, in the film film community, getting to talk with those those people, you know, kind of picking their brains, exchanging ideas, networking. I mean, it's also really inspirational, you know. Especially there there are a couple of times where I'm like, you know, like my animation, man. No, who who else is doing this around here? And like some some kid, I, I think it was from Italy. Uh, he turned it in an animation and um, to one of these festivals, and it's just blew me away and it, i just i had to really go back to the drawing board about what i was going to do next and i'm like oh man mine doesn't have a story doesn't have structure it's just <laughs> like this this dude is killing it right now and i'm uh, so that it's it's humbling that's yeah. that's that's the that's a good answer for that um, yeah. it's it's a lot of fun though it's, yeah. it's a lot of fun as i as i mentioned in, in your intro we we met at, at Sage. What was uh, what was your experience like at, at Sage? How did you end up there? What was the whole college design art student life like for you? It was great overall. I learned a lot. How I ended up there is probably the most interesting part. In high school, you know, I you know stopped doing sports, stopped doing everything, and <laughs> focused on building like an art portfolio uh, for my senior year. I thought it was good. You know, I was the best drawer in the school. I thought anyway, me and one of my friends, we went down to the city to a portfolio review day. And I thought it would be like, you know, 20, 30 people down in Manhattan at Pratt. And this is yeah. back in 2008. There's like thousands. I mean, there's lines like wrapped, wrapped around the block just to get in. So we, we, we went in there and we're shaking our boots and I approach a man named Matt McKellicott and he, uh, he was representing Sage. Uh, he was reviewing portfolios for recruitment there and um, showing my stuff. And, you know, I'm like, what you think? Like, you know, <laughs> I, I got, I got the goods, don't I? Like is, and he just tore me apart in the <laughs> traditional, the traditional Matt way. Um, and he told me at one point that, you know, I should really rethink, you know, what I want to do for my career. And yeah, it just kind of tore me apart. That train ride back to uh, Poughkeepsie from New York City was a long one. I wanted to throw this book away. Eventually I did. I threw my portfolio away. I just restarted and I said, you know what, I'm going to go back to Sage and I'm going to meet this dude. I'm going to bring him some good stuff. <laughs> and um, a year later, I met Matt again. Um, he reviewed my portfolio once more. And uh, Did he remember you? It took a little jogging of his memory. <laughs> I, I, I've told him this story a few times. He, was, yeah. he, he always tells me, I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, I, I have like a dartboard with your picture, like on the bullseye, <laughs> you know, all summer. Just, you know, I'm coming back for you, man. But yeah, I got in it. And um, it was great starting off in fine arts, illustration painting, that sort of thing. It, you know, that, that's what I was good at and developing those skills. You know, I, I would understand, you know, it's very difficult to get a job out of college to begin with, let alone being an illustrator, being a painter, a traditional fine artist. It's very, very difficult to um, find work right out of college. So 
I wanted to get into graphic design. And I did, you know, I, I took as many courses as I could in the time that I had there. Typography, you know, I took a class with, with you, of course. And, you know, just learn a lot of, about design principles, a lot of the rules, you know, a, a lot of ways to educate a client or wh- whoever you're doing work for. Um, yeah. So it really, it honed in a, a discipline that I think I needed. So I wanted to kind of dip into animation a little bit, you know, kind of tap back into the illustrating fine art skills and give it some movement. And, you know, from there, everything just kind of opened up. Being an animator or or motion designer, it's pretty fluid. There's always somebody out there looking to have their work a bit more engaging from a video standpoint. And from there, it just, just kind of took off. Sage is great. Obviously, a lot more to that, um, you know, portfolio development, learning how to engage employers, right, clients, right. that sort of thing. It was great. The image that I have in my head of you is that you're in one of those rooms that just has like one, has the Cintiq, I think it was. And, oh, yeah. and so, so you must have been in there a lot if that's the memory of you that I have etched in my brain whenever I think of you that's that's the image I have like you on the Cintiq machine like drawing something and uh just alone in that room like spending probably hours on oh, on some God. illustration or some animation right I miss it I miss that it was so peaceful it was so <laughs> like that I mean because that's all you had to focus on you just focus on the work you didn't have to worry about you know kids a mortgage or anything like that oh you yeah know, life just, right yeah, yeah. You know, you I just, that's say. Like, you try to tell students that all the time. Like this is the this is going to be one of the best times. You get to focus on being creative, and just enjoy that. Spend all the time you can in the studio and make stuff and play and explore. Because as soon as you get out, your time is going to be drastically reduced as far as like you know the amount of time you have to do these things. You know, life happens, right? How do you drill that into twenty? 20- 21 22 year old me in college i, I think about that a lot <laughs> yeah matt mcgillica you gotta he's he's good at giving the critique you know I, oh do you still God. have that dartboard <laughs> no no man i've you got a know, new dartboard would... <laughs> no i mean he taught me a lot i and anyone you know who, who he's teaching uh, needs that discipline you know needs that level of uh, skepticism because you know you get you gotta challenge yourself you know, I said this to you the other day, like, I wish I had you or Matt or Gene with me on some of these, you know, meetings where I have to show my work and I have to convince a bunch of lawyers or a bunch of, you know, marketing people, you know, that this idea works. <laughs> and this is the, this is the best one. I wish before those meetings, I could show it to one of you guys and be like, what do you, what do you get? Come on, like, help me out here. Like, I'm dying here. Help me out. I'm sure you're doing just fine without us. We're there. We're there in your head somewhere, you know? Exactly. Just... <laughs> All right. We got to wrap up. It's time for the pop quiz. Kind of like being back in school. So the first question is, what's your favorite neighborhood or area in Albany? Madison Avenue. No, any spot between Lark and Pearl. You know, yep. there's t- tons of restaurants, a lot of um, brownstones. Uh, what's your work beverage of choice? I like, uh, you know, those polar seltzer cans, the grapefruit. Oh, man. I drink a whole 12 pack of those if I'm working. Uh, your after work beverage. You're off the clock. I like hobnob red wine. Um, sketchbook, blank or gridded? Oh, blank. Yeah, blank. I can't do gridded. Do you actually use a the storyboard sketchbook, you know, the one with the panels. Nope. I draw nope. outside every time I draw outside of them, every single time. There's forget the boxes. Yeah, it can't stay in the inside the lines, huh? So you're working with a lot of files, a lot of video, animation, other things. How do you back up your files? Separate hard drive when I do. I'm ashamed to say <laughs> I've lost I, I, I I've lost quite a few files that I've had to pay to uh get back so it's a it's man how, i mean how many times do i have to be told to back my work up on a drive and i think you know it's it, it won't happen to me like it'll never happen to me i'm not <laughs> spending a 100 bucks on a drive or whatever and then it happens and um so yeah 
a separate hard drive. I've got five of these things right here, just in case. Do you listen to music at work? Yeah. Yep. What, what genre of music do you listen to while you're working? Hip hop or or um, 70s rock. What 70s rock do you listen to? I'm going through Steely Dan right now. I like um, Thin Lizzy. Uh, America, that's who I'm into right now. I, I can get anything done listening to those guys. Your workstation. What's your workstation like? I have a PC tower, two mid-sized screens, a stand-up desk, and uh, yeah, keyboard and a mouse. And a a stand-up desk. Is it flexible? Does it go down to a seated desk as well? Or? Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. All right, final question in the pop quiz. What is your favorite animated film? That's a tough one. There's a lot out there. <laughs> uh, I, I would have to go with um, The Iron Giant. Brett I like, Bradbury. yeah. Yeah, I like The Iron Giant. Yeah, before yeah. he was, before he did, uh, what did he do? He did Ratatouille and Incredibles. Incredibles. Yeah, yeah. And one of the Mission Impossible movies. Oddly enough, yeah. All right. uh, You get the last word. Any thoughts for our audience? Yeah. If you're in this field, you know, if you're a graphic designer or an animator or a photographer or any select field, you know, learn as much as you can, you know, branch out. You know, if you, if you aren't doing it professionally, like if you're, if you're not working for a client, you are the client. So learn whatever you can. And, you know, that, that's the, the payment is having the knowledge of knowing how to do it. So if you're, if you're a graphic designer, learn motion design, make, make graphic design move. And if you're a photographer, you know, learn video, you know, learn web design. Learn as much as you can because there's always an application for this stuff. Spon- sponge everything up. That's what, Sounds great. That's what I'll tell them. It was great catching up with you, Jordan. Yeah, Chris, thanks for having me on. So great to see your career evolve, you know, from student to doing all these uh, amazing projects. and Yeah, from from the annoying student uh, (laughs) knocking on your door so you can open up the Cintiq room. Yeah, I I think I got a key somewhere in here. Yeah, exactly. Exactly say that. That's funny. All right. I'll talk to you later. All right. Be well. Bye. Wipe those tears from your eyes And know you've been crowned up Wipe those tears from your eyes A couple of takeaways from Jordan Learn some design, make a project And put it out there in the world Uh, It might lead to a, a project or a new job And keep refining the portfolio It's always a work in progress Thanks to Jordan McClendon of Center for Advanced Research at SUNY If you have any comments or questions for me or any of my guests, please leave them in the comments. And subscribe so you can catch the next episode of Design Futures. Until next time, go learn something. The future depends on it. Thanks for listening. See ya.